Hey everybody, welcome back to All Fiction is Fantasy. Daniel here. I hope you're doing well, and if you're not, I hope you are soon. Don't believe him. <laughs> yeah, I, he's, he's I, a want, I want harm. He, he, he's a misanthrope at heart. <laughs> I'm not a nice guy. <laughs> As you can hear, I am actually joined by a guest today. So this is uh, the first of maybe a, maybe a, an ongoing series or something. And I'm enjo- I'm joined today by my buddy Aaron. Aaron, how's it going? Good. Thanks for uh, having me. Thanks for the invite. Yeah. So today we are going to do a long or a, an in-depth discussion on Nift the Lean, uh, Michael Shea's uh, really, really great fantasy from 1982. I've already done my review and um, Aaron and I kind of read the book together, and uh, we decided not to, to in the talk same about place. It. Not in the same place. No, no. Separate, separate bedrooms <laughs> reading together. <laughs> well, separate beds. <laughs> uh, so Aaron and I kind of have a, a history together. We've worked together for quite a while. On when did we start? Uh, when, when was uh, genre busters? That would like have been two thousand eight. No, no, oh, wait, before no, no, 2008 was, was like the last uh, yeah, time we recorded the oh, podcast. Five, I think. Yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we recorded, I think, one podcast together yep. in the basement of my old house. Yep. So, yeah, we worked on a film uh, website together, and Aaron was living in Japan at the time. He was mm-hmm. our man in Japan, <laughs> <laughs> our correspondent in <laughs> the, Japan. The Gaijin Mountain That's Man. That's right, yep. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, we've been reading buddies kind of uh, ever since. I, Aaron was one of the first people I met up here in Seattle when I moved here. Mm. So, uh, Nift the Lean. Um, so I, I think I started first. We're just going to do a little introduction. And I had read at least two or three of the stories, probably two of the stories. Yeah. And we went out for drinks. And I was like, dude, mm. you, you got to read Nift the Lean. This thing is fantastic. Mm-hmm. And I was maybe a little afraid that I was hyping it up a little bit too much. Uh-huh. And then you started reading and I was a little nervous. Like, oh my God, what are Because, I mean, we like a lot of the same things, but we also yeah. have... We have differences. Uh, we, we, we diverge. Yep. As much as we agree, we, we diverge on things. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe we may, more we may agree. agree more, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But So, yeah. So, yeah. What, what did you end up uh, thinking overall of the, of the book? Yeah, I loved it. Uh, doing prepping for this, I, uh, I definitely realized I had the feeling reading it originally... Uh, but it was confirmed that it's better on repeat. Uh, oh, really? Or, you think so? On reread. Yeah. yeah. There's there's a lot of um, there's a lot of textures in it, and uh, and a lot of nuances. I knew were there. Yeah. yeah. But uh, especially that that final story. The final story. Yeah. I I should have reread that. So you might have one up on me on this uh, discussion. I have a pretty bad memory, and I I did not reread anything. I reread bits and pieces. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, I, I finished the book a little bit before you did, so it yeah. might be a little um, mm. more fresh in your mind, so you yeah. can kind of yeah, yeah. keep me in few, on, few, on the details. A few more cobwebs <laughs> yeah. around it for you. Oh, yeah. man. My, my memory post-COVID is <laughs> seriously, uh, yeah, not good. But, um, yeah, so we're just going to go through each story in, uh, in order that they're in the book. I'm taking the first, Aaron's the second. Then back to me for the third, and then Aaron will finish up kind of leading the discussions. Ooh. And um, as each each story is prefaced by, with an introduction by a character named Shag Margold. And uh, this was a really, I think, a, a really interesting framing device. Great. Um, although I have read and I've heard this opinion from people who have commented on my video and I read on Goodreads that a lot of people skip the the Shag Margold introductions. Hmm. They don't like them. Hmm. And I thought that was really weird because I think they add so much yeah. to the uh, so much context to yeah. the story. They they absolutely do. I think they are uh, obviously there's no excitement. <laughs> there's <laughs> right, no right. there's no narrative. There's no narrative, um, and there's no uh, there's no cohesive nature to them. There's no co- yeah, they're they, different. Each they, one is different. They, yep, yeah, yep. And uh, uh, he often references things that you, as the reader, don't understand because it's written supposedly for someone in that world who already has a set uh, of references. A, a background. That, a Nift background. is yeah. Nift yeah. is a uh, obviously a famous character, right. a famous person person in this world right right i think we're supposed to understand that this 
book got transported across dimensions or time mm -hmm. or something and we are reading it but it's basically in the form or at least each story is uh uh would have been distributed in this world right right um, and but, i guess even before the first part to kind of back that up we do start with a eulogy right, by shag right who is saying hey friends our our our, our mutual friend nift yeah has a part of this mortal coil and he mm -hmm. waxes eloquently about mm -hmm. the great niphthalene doesn't he do a little does he give a little song or there's a there's a, a salutation to the world as beheld at dawn from atop the mountain uber mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. he goes into a little kind of verse at the end but yeah so we get the we we, we get the sense that nift has led this kind of grand life right from, right. from Shag Margold. Mm -hmm. Now, was there ever a point in the book, did you ever think that maybe Shag Margold was Nift? I didn't. I didn't. I think it's an interesting theory, and, it, and it, it could be. It could hold water. But I found the writing so different. Mm -hmm. For Shag Margold's writing is consistent. All of the intros sound like they're from the same person. Yes, yes. And they are all pretty boring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, I, I mean, I mean, that could be a, a ruse, but I also don't really understand why. Yeah, I don't Nift think it is. Would do uh, it up until the fourth story. I was yeah. wondering though. Ah, okay. I think the fourth okay. story kind of. Tells us it's not, but yes. I, I kept like there was something in the back of my mind up until that fourth yeah, story. The where... fourth story definitely says that they are separate people. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, so does all the introductions. So you can still have carry that uh that possibility in your head if you wanted to, but I I don't really see a lot of evidence yeah. for it. Now you brought up an interesting thing that I wanted to talk about was the the, the um Shay's command of voice. And, mm. and point of view, mm. there are at least four different points of view characters, or or there there are at least four different authors, yes, or characters who are writing. So this is kind of a com it's kind of a complex book because yeah. we have so we have the voice of Shag Margold, who is giving us context, and each of the four stories might actually be written by a different character or a different character in this world, a different mm -hmm. author. Mm -hmm. And three of the four stories are from the first person point of view, mm -hmm. but at least one of those isn't actually written by Nift. Right. So it's somebody writing as Nift, as Nift. <laughs> in the uh -huh. first person. Mm -hmm. And then the fourth is from the third person. Mm -hmm. And Nift isn't even really the main character in he, the story, he, he engages in no action. Nothing. He's, he's just an observer. Yeah, yeah. So that's a really fascinating it's, way to structure. Yeah, a novel. And I was wondering yeah. if you think, and I haven't read this, so I don't know, but if that was a way that Shay did, she use those con, those uh, conventions to disguise the fact that this was a a, a touch up. Right. That these were written over a period of time, like Moorcock's Elric, and and Elric is so. Like the, the the style of Elric, the the quality of the writing is so mm -hmm. up and down. Yeah, and yeah. and Moorcock would go in and, and and fix things up, a fix up. That's the word, fix yeah, up, fix up. Yeah. to make it read more like a novel. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if Shay did that, if Shay employed this kind of narrative device mm -hmm. to disguise the fact that his writing wasn't consistent and it was done over a long period of time. Yeah, it, I, mean, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it, it could be. I mean. Uh, he obviously loves, uh, stretching himself and wild ideas. So I could also just see him being like, I, I'll put these stories together at some point. And this one I want to be from the third person. I want Nip to just be an observer mm -hmm. or, you know, uh, I could see him, uh, just being an experimental type. Yes. Have you read writer. anything else from Shay? No, this Maybe, is the first, yeah. thing. first I, thing. I think maybe I've read at least one short story. Oh, okay. I think. Oh. I think. Because I think he has a he's written some Cthulhu fiction. Yeah. And yeah. I'm pretty sure I've read at least one of his stories in one of the Chaosium books. Uh-huh. 
Eat. But I'm pretty sure I shouldn't be talking about this if I'm not sure right now when it's being recorded. Oh, that's but mistakes all the time. but uh, <laughs> I believe one of his short stories got adapted for that new um, uh, the Netflix um, Cabinet of Curiosities by um, by Del Toro? Toro. Really? Yeah, it's the rats. And the, uh, the guy, the the, the grave digger. Yeah. I that think was a, that's a, was that a Michael Shea? I'm pretty sure that's a oh, Michael Shea. Okay, we'll have to check that out. We'll put yeah. it, I'll put it on the screen. Oh, by the way, yeah, uh, this is an audio only. Ten minutes in, so yeah. just, yeah. <laughs> we'll, have some, we'll have some images, but yeah, you will not see our faces on this one. Lucky but, you. But, uh, oh, that's interesting, huh? Yeah, and it was good. Yeah, that right. one was good. Yeah, that, was that a good one, one was good. Yeah. That show's okay. It's okay. Kind of a flat I, line. I, for a I didn't bit, watch but, all of them. Yeah. Uh, I watched the ones that I read the best reviews of, mm-hmm. and they happened to be... The Michael Shea, the Henry Cutner. <laughs> oh, that's right. Cutner yeah. did do one. Yeah, yeah. Had, did, huh, yeah. 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 So I have a lot of Shea, but I haven't read. So I haven't read his follow up to Dying Earth. Mm. But I have that. And then I did I did recently get the uh his collection of uh of mythos fiction. Yeah. Called De- Demirge. Up there. Oh, right. And right. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to reading more of him to yeah. see. To, to see if if uh, he is that kind of creative, yeah, and because yeah. like like this thing, I think just stands up there with the best of, yeah. of fantasy that I've ever read. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. Yeah. So let's uh, let's kind of get into the stories here. So um, this first story is called "Come Then Mortal." We will seek her soul, and um, in Margold's introduction here. I just want to read just just the first paragraph so you can kind of get an idea of uh, of Shag Margold's voice. Uh, And he says here that the manuscript of this account is in a professional scribe's hand, but is unmistakably of Niff's own composition. This is not automatically the case, even though a given history be recounted as if Niff's voice were two of his dearest friends in repeating tales he told them, but did not himself record. So here we get we get kind of like the setup, and I, as you can tell, uh, I mean that kind of. I don't think when I read it the first time, I really picked up on what he was saying there. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. yeah, right. yeah, I think you're right on a reread that you'll pick up a lot more. So yeah. you get just uh, just a real sense of of what Shay was doing with this voice of Shag Margold, but uh, this is a story all about uh, Nift and his. Uh, He's telling the story to his other friend, Barnar, and mm-hmm. they're kind of like mid journey. They're kind of like mid quest or something. And, and he's relaying this old quest to Barnar, his friend. And this story is all about Nift and a guy named Haldar. And they are basically uh, employed by this succubus, this demon to, uh, and her name is Dalasim. And she wants Nift and Haldor to kidnap a, an estranged lover in kind of an act of revenge. This guy named Defalk or Defalk, a scorned ex-lover, and basically uh, take him to hell, mm-hmm. <laughs> escort him to hell. And if they accomplish this uh, quest, she will give him the keys or she will give Nift and Haldor the keys to this great wizard's mansion. <laughs> and... And Nift can take or leave the mansion. Nift, I feel like he's in it more for the journey. The adventure. The adventure. Yeah. And the, story. Fun. the story. The story, yeah. And Haldar is like, oh, heck yeah. <laughs> I wa- I've heard about this key, this key, and this great wizard's man. is supposed to be this fantastic. Like, they've been, they, it's like this fabled yeah. reward that they are after. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but also Haldor falls deeply under the spell of Dallison Mm -hmm. and he is infatuated Mm -hmm. he is just obsessed with her and her coming into being is really cool yeah so she's like this she she, is bird from the ground as a Mm. skeleton and then slowly her flesh and guts start start uh, forming forming into an incorporeal form yeah and she appears as this great like just sex goddess basically Mm -hmm. and Haldor is like oh my god you are so beautiful. I love you. I will do anything mm-hmm. for you. <laughs> and what's what's amazing is just a second before he saw her guts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, 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 oh. like he saw her skeleton <laughs> with just like organs and like some meat on it. Uh-huh. And then the minute it gets wrapped in flesh, flesh he's like, like oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Sign me up. Yeah. 
And uh, so, so they are they are employed by this demoness, and they have to go and they have to kidnap this guy. And uh, she gives him like a, a, a time stopping spell, and she tells him that they have to uh, that Nick has to wrestle this uh, Undertaker type lizard man mm -hmm. he, he's kind of like this uh bodyguard for death basically mm -hmm. this guy that follows death around and protects death and and harvest and harvest and harvest soul. the soul harvester mm -hmm. i think that is yeah. yeah the soul taker the, the soul, soul taker. taker yeah and i thought it was a really cool scene where nift and haldor are kind of sneaking around this uh this uh castle mm -hmm. and they're hiding kind of like in an armoire yeah. or on top of a bed or something yeah, and yeah, they cast yeah. this spell and they freeze time yeah and the soul taker is there and he's like this great lizard man and and nif is like do i really have to wrestle this guy uh -huh. and he's like oh yeah i really have to wrestle this guy uh -huh. and so they they rescue or they they wrestle and to order to uh to gain entrance mm -hmm. into hell and mm -hmm. to drag to, to prove to themselves yeah to prove yeah. themselves and then the rest of the story, the bulk of the story, is them going uh, basically through hell and going through these kinds of uh, uh, gatekeeping challenges, kind of. Yeah. And in each challenge, they have to get one of the people in their party. So we have Nift, Haldar, and Defalk. At each gate, one of them has to offer up a piece of flesh. Pass to, to continue to pass on. And I wanted to read a little bit on page 54 here. So this says, uh, they blocked the bridge, bobbing and leering as the hounds were reined up in a scramble of paws. Stooped as these crones were, their height matched the guides. They were huge in their stench too. Charnel house mixed with the smell of a brothel's slop room. I'm so glad this book does not have a uh, scratch and sniff because there are so <laughs> oh, many man. disgusting things in this book. Oh, Just every, flesh. Every and, every every single uh, story has, has something really like, gross like a, in it. A, a, a pile of just yeah. of, of undead bodies that are mm -hmm. decaying and slimy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. <laughs> uh, their eyes were flat and opaque, like glazed snot in the wrinkled uh. cups of their sockets. They all had torn out patches in their hair, and what showed was not scalp, but yellowed skull bone. Yet their faces were fleshed, wend and warded. They wore grave rags cinched with gallows ropes at the waist. A glimpse through the robe of one where a concerned, where a, where a cancered breast showed a tumor pit you could get your fist into was enough to tell us that their rags were a mercy to our eyes. The fiercest of the three came forward grinning. One of the hounds leaped on her with a roar. She gave it a, uh, she gave it a clout to the skull with her fist that sprawled it shivering in the traces. Skin, guide, she shrilled. Man skin with blood in it. Living blood, we want a piece of you or you can't cross. We want a piece now. And this was the first part where I, I realized that um, Nift is not really like other sword and sorcery characters because he volunteers the first piece of flesh. Mm -hmm. And um, he is not, you know, if this was Fawford and Grey Mouser, yeah. I feel like they would have Rochambeau'd for it or something. Right. Or or one would have tricked the other one or something. Yeah. Yeah. It it, it it's so easy to compare them. Yes. Yeah. Because there are uh similarities that a lot of other um uh fantasy sword and sorcery doesn't have that they both of those series but both of them have. And but there's so many so much different. Yeah. There there's more different than similar. Yeah. Nift uh, is not aloof. Yeah, he he yeah. is he's earnest. He's earnest. He's present. He yeah. he shows he shows a lot of care. Yeah, for whatever situations he is in. Yeah, and him and whoever he whoever he is with at the time they they aren't bickering. Yeah, they're yeah. working together, mm -hmm. and uh, he's not really wisecracking. Really, no, 
No, and he's not much of a rogue either. Yeah. Like he's not uh he's not boastful to people like telling them about uh about his skill and how he's going to do this easily or anything like that and uh um and he just is quietly competent yeah. and confident. Yeah. It's kind of like the uh, where, where uh, Aaron and I are both reading uh, Bard right now by Keith Taylor, mm-hmm. and he's kind of the polar opposite of yeah. of Felamid. Yeah, the, the Bard yeah. in that is such a rap scallion. He's, he's totally, so cool. Totally so cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, so that was kind of the first thing. And, and another complaint or another criticism that I've read about Niftaline is that it is light on character development. And while I I see that point of view, I think. When you compare Nift to other sword and sorcery characters, yeah, which are always heavy on character. Oh, exactly right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> sarcasm. <laughs> but I think the character development is there when you compare him to others because yes. he's very. It's a very different kind of characterization yeah. in Nift than in other sword and sorcery uh, characters. And I do think it's more nuanced. I think you do have to read a little deep, or or reread even just to to see the the character development right or or it's not even it's more like he doesn't have arcs nif doesn't have arcs he doesn't have a character arc uh, no he does it's not revelations of elements of his character that the stories reveal and so i think that's just a different product than most people mm-hmm. are used to and so they think there isn't development but the characters are very well developed and you get a little bit as you go along, a little bit is revealed as you go along. I just don't think a lot of people are uh, are used to uh, reading that, and so they don't recognize it. Right, and and I think Shay's prose can be uh, it, it can be difficult at times. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There are definitely times where I lost the plot. Yep, and especially I, the fourth one. Yes, <laughs> uh, yeah, the fourth one to me. I'm, I'm I, I gave Aaron the fourth one because I. I would, I would not have ended the book on the four story. It's not bad, no. but man, that thing is dense. That thing and is dense. There were multiple times that I had to stop, go yeah. back, and reread. Okay, wait, what exactly is, is Shay saying? Because uh-huh. the, the, it's a it's a challenge. It's a challenging book. It is. It is. It's very challenging. Yeah. Uh, and and there is no character in that. That I mean I mean there are characters, and uh, the Oracle gets a little bit yes. of like yeah. Is is a developed character and a developed uh, uh, female character, yes. which is the only yes, the um, only yeah, real yeah, female the only character. One, but she's cool. She's, she's super like, she's cool. She's great. She's, she's awesome. Very very cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, from the beginning to the end. Yes. I yeah. mean, she in some ways takes the Nift role. Yeah. I mean, not yeah. exactly, but because she's not really on an adventure or anything like that. Um, uh, as far as being the the one who is involved in the most action mm-hmm. and sort of gets out uh, having done a, um, uh, a a theft. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> and, and so, yeah, so there is, really isn't a, the, a lot of the stories, or at least two or three of the stories in here are about kind of a theft. Uh, mm-hmm. This quest is about a delivery, pick up and deliver. Mm-hmm. They're trying to deliver to Falk mm-hmm. to the bowels of hell. Uh, they do. They go through the challenges. Uh, each of them has to give up a piece of their flesh. Defalk has to give up a, uh, an eyeball. <laughs> that that's pretty. That was uh, pretty nasty. And uh, yeah, at, at the end, you do kind of feel bad for Defalk a little bit. A little bit. You know, he's not a good guy, but yeah, uh, he doesn't really know what's going on. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And I think I think Nif starts to feel a little bad for him. A little bit, or yeah. at least what he has to do. Yeah, I think so. I think it's. I loved that element to Falcon Dallasim. Dallasim, yeah, um, yeah. I loved everything with their past because nothing is straightforward and easy. There is no like right and wrong, right? Because yeah. uh, the the thing that they do. Uh, you know, when Dallasim was was alive, uh, that gets them in trouble, only would cause her to be um, 
be imprisoned. Yeah. Uh, even though they're both guilty of it, you know, the like being a man, he's able to escape free and stuff. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. and he's just like, yeah, well, you know, well, too bad. Tough crap. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but I think all of us that, you know, that's society's, uh, problem. Like society sets that up. He didn't do it. And, right. He was just, so, he was just benefiting just, Right. Yeah, from the circumstance. Yeah. And yeah. and by benefiting, just not being punished. Mm-hmm. And so it's horrible that she's punished. Um, and you under you understand both. You understand her anger and wanting his, his soul. Wanting that revenge. And wanting yeah. that revenge. Yeah. And she isn't wrong to want it. But he's also like, I mean, you know, a lot of people, uh, uh, if they are in any way uh majority uh who enjoys uh you know the privilege, the, the privilege yeah. in a society they've taken advantage of it oh yeah some you'd point. be stupid not to yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know and so he's he, so i think you know it's the story is and th- this is where shay's mastery i think really uh shows through that he doesn't give an easy yeah that, and 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 he doesn't but he gives both like uh, a good footing and explanation yeah and on top of that he he cheats on or, or he cheats his heroes out of their reward yeah. because at the yeah. end of the at the end of the quest they do what they're supposed to and they are they are tricked they, uh-huh. they, they don't get the the key to the wizard's mats and mm-hmm. Neff is kind of like, eh, all right, whatever. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah. this was fun. This was a, yeah. this was an interesting story. Well, I mean, his uh, the other guy, like Haldar. Uh, no, no, Haldar. Haldar. Yeah. Um, Haldar does get a uh, yes, yes. A, it, well, well, what at least at the time seems to him to be a reward. Yeah, <laughs> where yeah. he gets to have eternal sex <laughs> yes, with right the, with the demon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, yeah, and that's the last we hear of Haldor. Yeah, Haldor. So yeah, yeah. so he uh, he is not. Niff's partner throughout the book. Uh, in the next yeah. two stories, we have Barnar, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, let's go under the let's go under the second story, and that is the Pearls of the Vampire Queen. Yes, this so, is my favorite. This is my oh, favorite yeah, story. This yeah. story, is, you you gave me the hardest one, but you also gave, gave me the, the most oh, yeah. fun. This story, this oh, this man, one is this so perfect. Just Every rules. it's it, so good. There were multiple times in this story where I. I, I made a verbal uh, mm-hmm. noise reading it, yeah. like, like just like, yes, or like pumped my fist or laughed or Dance. something. Oh, yeah, man, this thing is just amazing. It's so good. Uh, so there is, there's an introduction by Shag Margold, just like all the other ones. Uh, and kind of what I was saying earlier, uh, Margold mentions that nift is incredibly modest mm-hmm. and it is interesting because through all but the last story where he doesn't really do much he often has to complete some incredible maneuver with a weapon uh, a spear or an arrow or a sword and he comments on it now he may not be writing the story so yeah, it may not yeah. really be him but he does comment on how masterful it is and how one you know how he, like his skills really uh, they really like spears play. they really like spears I, that's a it's a it's no, a weird weapon it's, you it's, don't see uh it's, spears it's, it's historically a very strong weapon yeah like in no, the real yeah, world huge, yeah yeah huge uh, like but, if you had a spear you were a, a massive advantage yeah exactly uh, but in in sword and sorcery and in yeah. modern fantasy fiction yeah heroes rarely have yeah. spears yeah well yeah. king arthur didn't have a spear so no, yeah that's, that's <laughs> he didn't he, he, he pulled the spear from the donut <laughs> uh yeah so uh so yeah now it's all named swords Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, there's no named weapons in here. Is there? Does uh, he have a name? Does he have a named weapon in one? I, I can't don't remember. think so. Yeah, I don't think so. That's he's, another thing that's awesome about yeah, Bard, uh, the, Golden Singer, and Kincaid. Such oh, the, Kincaid. Kincaid is such a great. Who I, names their sword Kincaid? I, I, that some, is so some cool. Irish guy, some ancient oh, Irish man, guy. Oh man, I love it's that. So great. Yeah, I love. It. <laughs> I, I love that like mundane stuff like uh-huh, that. Yeah, like just a guy's name. Like, yeah, the sword uh-huh. is named Fred. Yeah, yeah, it's so good. It's so good. Uh. Yeah, uh, the the he is like modest, almost demure in a sense. But he is he isn't false, falsely modest. Mm-hmm. He will talk 
about like his skills and you do feel like it wasn't an accident that he saved somebody else's ass by some like throwing a spear at the perfect time. It's yeah, his yeah. skill and his knowledge and his experience and all that. Um, and then uh, this, as you can see from the title, there is a vampire queen, a vampire ruler, and Margold makes, I think, a cool analogy of her uh, uh, being a vampire as being similar to what government and royalty to do to their subjects, kind of drain them. Right. Um, but yeah. she is she also gives them wealth and security at the same time so yeah, she's like a job provider too she's a job provider <laughs> exactly and and well and she keeps the scary things out. yeah yeah the lurks the lurks yeah yeah uh uh so nift and barnar they go hunting for monster pearls in the vampire queen's private treasure swamps oh, her swamps are so swamps. cool well and I, I also love the uh, like similarity to like the King of England's lands that you couldn't yeah, go you know, with the fox hunting or, or whatever. Or, yeah, or, well, or you, whatever. you couldn't, yeah. um, if you were a peasant, you couldn't uh, hunt a, a deer on, yeah, on the anything. lands, even though yeah. they're deer running all over the place. If you killed a, a deer on the King's land, the King's lands are like huge. <laughs> they're, they're all over the place. And uh, so this is kind of the same thing. Like, uh, so th they pick a specific time where there's a jubilee in the main city to go in. So they're not going to have to deal with the uh, the city guard. Um, and uh, they meet up and begin working with a guy named Kerkin, who... And this is Nift and Barnar yes, all working together. Nift yeah. and Barnar. Uh, they are working with this guy, Kerkin, who loses his partner Hasp to a lurk. Um, what do you what, so lurk? I was picturing a lurk as kind of a um, oh, what are those like turtle demons in Japan? Uh, that the the uh, kappas, yeah, 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 yes. So, I were one of the, the drowned guys in The Witcher, kind of like these, yes, these elongated water golem type, yeah, type right. creatures. Yeah, I saw them as being very long mm -hmm. as well. Um, and there's uh, not a lot of while there is a lot of description in the book of setting, there isn't a lot of description in the, the creatures. No, and I don't know what Nif looks like. Like, there isn't a lot of description of, of him. Uh, and according to the other version of the book I have, he kind of looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no, there's not a lot of physical description no. of, of people, of, people. Of, of beings. No. Oh, of some like the vampire queen is well described. Yeah. Women in their <laughs> yeah, in their are, nude yeah. are very well described. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or when their bodies are reconstituting mm -hmm. themselves from the ground, uh, then then they're they're well described. Um, uh, so they're uh, farming these uh, 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 these these giant pearls, yes. right from these polyps or polyps. something. Yeah, yeah, they. These polyps are again. I don't know exactly what they like. A a large stock that is um, like the size of a couple of humans. I yeah, kind of I kept felt thinking like. of uh, if you remember that uh, the, the video game Dragon Slayer. Uh -huh. When you're going across the bridge and those like uh, the, the the tentacles pop up and they have mm -hmm. the eyeball in them. Yeah. I kept yes. thinking of that. Yes, like totally. These tentacles with totally. with, with a, a big yeah. Uh, all up thing at the end right. and inside those are these big black pearls right exactly yeah yeah and they use the uh, kirkin's lost partner hasp they use his bloated corpse because the the poison it's, that yeah, the, the, the poison, polyps yeah. deliver to you make you bloat and they use it as bait. They push it into other polyps, oh, and they and they so just attack cool. it. And then they get to like grab the uh, the pearls and harvest them. I love that so much. Them just dragging this bloated, poisoned body around as a as a lure, uh -huh. and, uh -huh. and using that to 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 distract the polyps yeah. to get the pearls out. That was so awesome. So awesome. It was and, so cool. And also, they don't describe every movement. But they do describe that there's different pools. Mm -hmm. It's not one big open swamp. It's no. different yeah. pools of like little swamps. 
It was like and tide pools. Almost like, like weird tide, a swamp tide. Yeah, pool or, or like rice. Um, uh, 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 yeah, almost like yeah. uh, rice patties. Yeah. Uh, but like I, you know, more natural for me. And uh, the idea of having to drag this corpse, this bloated corpse, out of each one and then push him into it. <laughs> yeah, it's so one. gross. <laughs> and uh, and. I do love, I mean, there's, there's just little touches in these stories where the uh, the character Kirkin, who they have, uh, they're working with for a short time, um, he dies uh, due to a mistake uh, while exhausted and like gets killed by one of the, one of the polyps, like he just gets too close and, um, uh, and Nift, I love that, like that makes Nift ponder like, uh, maybe we should quit while we're ahead. Yeah, maybe, maybe we have enough pearls. Maybe we have enough, and <laughs> and we are told by this point that the pearls are insanely valuable. That just a handful of them oh, yeah, would they set them up for a long time, for like years, yeah. right? a couple years. They yeah. would, all they need is is a few a few of these black pearls. Yeah, yeah, and they're, and, and they're set. And but but while he's thinking this, he he's instead light bulbs a uh, uh, a scheme. And uh, and we we as the audience don't know any of it. We, no, we're, mm. we, he doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't. There's no like. Okay, here's what we're here's yeah. what we're gonna do. You no. don't learn the plan. You only learn the plan through them acting out what the, they're the, doing. Just the just the plotting yeah. of the story yeah. after that. Yeah, uh, and Ocean's Eleven basically kind of yeah <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah, uh, they. They catch one of the lurks and they taxidermy like that. We get a lot of description of like the way they cut, cut out the, uh, the guts mm -hmm. and preserve it and everything. I, I love that kind yeah. of stuff. It, it gives so much texture and grounding to stories. Um, and then they kill a goal and we've never seen a goal before. We'd have no idea what they are, but uh they um well, how would you describe them what, what's your the idea in your head i think were, were the goals or was it the lure i might be confused but one of them i one of them i i, I pictured more insectoid or a, a, a chitin-esque uh kind of a or or yeah. a, a carapace or some kind of yeah some kind of uh weird Almost humanoid insect. Yeah, I At think least that's how I. Was I think picturing. that's the goal. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and they have uh, teeth that. So you find out so after, they have those fangs. They huh? have the fangs right. after yes, they yes. kill it. They uh, and again, you have no idea as the reader why they are attacking the goal. Uh, and the 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 I do love again the questions that Shay asks. They just to be able to pull this um, this job that they have, they go and kill this goal, and the goal is roasting and eating a human. Yes, yeah, yeah, they're, they're, yeah. They, <laughs> when they, they go eat, up to it, so you humans. know that they are that that they that, that they kill and eat humans, probably randomly, not somebody who's who's like a bad guy necessarily, uh, but they are obviously uh, conscious. They have a conversation with it. And try and get it to attack them, and it's like I'm. I, I have. I already have my food. I don't. Yeah, need I don't need it. it. I, don't, I don't need anything more. So they just kill it, and then take the the fangs, um, and sell the they sell the carcass in the city. Yeah, they go back. They, they go into the. Is it like a kind of a a like a, a ziggurat city That's, kind of yeah. a, a pyramids kind of structure of yes. these these yeah. pyramid structures yeah. you go the swamp. Th you go through the walls of the city yeah and then you're in the city yeah and then you go through you have to climb up um but uh so i i mean there are a lot of stairs but i also think just a lot of sloped roads yeah. as yeah. well the fangs on a rope around their necks to show that, that they're they hunters have, and they have killed and that they have the goal. killed because these things have, are like these yep, are are, are dangerous they're hard they're hard to kill yep they're yeah. hard to kill and they're dangerous yeah. and so you are uh you get uh cachet in the city for having pr helped protect them from the goals right and so they get more leeway in um in their movement in the city 
uh, for having done this. And you just learn this as you go along. Like, and there's some kind of uh, ritual festival going on mm -hmm. where there's a, a, a new king is about to be sacrificed yes. to the queen, to the yes. vampire queen, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 And and so again, you're not, there's no info dump, no. which I love. Yes. Uh, but the idea is one person we assume chosen by random, maybe the vampire queen chooses them because they look appetizing to her. We're not sure. And they are uh, put in a holding cell. And again, no explanation. We assume they're given a sedative that paralyzes them. They are still aware, but they don't move. Right. They just sit there. And the city bribes the guards, like different people in the city bribe the guards to come and stare at the at the year yeah, king. The, yeah, the year king. Sound the like year yeah, king. yeah. Like, oh, this great the great year king. No, yeah. he's just He's, he's, he's for a night and then he gets killed. And then yeah. he gets killed. Yeah. <laughs> and they, they peer through a little uh, uh -huh. window on, yep. on a door cell, kind of like the old yep. speakeasy. Yep. Yeah. Like, oh, what, what, yeah. what does the year king look like this year? Yeah. Yeah. I love, <laughs> I love that. I love all these people. Like just the gruesome, mor morbid curiosity uh -huh. of people. Yeah. And uh, they, uh, Nifton Barnard, uh, use the lurk. Well, they, uh, Nift strings up ropes. Yeah, they, like these rafters. Or up, in, up in the yeah, rafters. Yeah. And it, it sounds like the ceilings are incredibly high because he's up there doing the work. And I would assume it'd be hard not to make noise. Above the guard's head. <laughs> Above the guard's yeah, head. So yeah, it must be just, really or, far. Or it's really noisy. I don't know. Yeah. There's a festival going yeah, on. Exactly. There's a lot of, a lot of commotion. Exactly. Who knows? So he's able to do the, rig these uh, this complex rope and pulley. Yeah. Yep system yep and 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 i love nift mentions that he before he was known as lift nift the lean yeah. he was known as nift, nift the, the nimble, the nimble. <laughs> i wonder how he got nift the lean <laughs> and and then later that night some bandits try and kill nift which seemed to like kind of come out of nowhere but it, it gave some uh some color to yeah. the to the world and um, and he's 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 able to outwit them, and then Barnar takes the uh, the corpse of the lurk and plays it like a marionette above from above the the ropes that Nift has made and uh, causes the guards to all come running. Yeah, he makes it act like it's like crawling down the wall, yeah. like some spider thing. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, control it. That was awesome. That was, that so, was great. so great. So great. And I love Nif's like, oh, I mean, these guards are really dumb. You could absolutely see the strings. But, <laughs> but you know, Nif's lurks are pretty, pretty scary. So, you know, they were thinking about other things. And while that is happening, uh, Nif sneaks in and steals a half a cup of the Year King's blood. Yeah. And then salves up the uh, from his ankle. And I love how he talks about how it will automatically uh, squirt out a half a cup and then it'll stop bleeding. Like he knows this already. <laughs> like how? Uh, yeah, okay. he's done it before. Uh, or maybe it's happened to him. And then he puts some salve over it uh, so that it's hidden. And, uh, and then they abscond with the blood. And then the... Uh, the queen sucks the blood, and I'm going to read that scene. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. That uh, she t brings out the uh, the year king and sucks his blood. And she knelt beside him, and her face was taut, refined by attention of icy love, made younger before our eyes by her passionate anticipation. She lowered her face, worshipfully, kissing to the muscle juncture of his neck and shoulder. And then there was a crisp, liquid sound of horrible distinctness. Her hands clutched his shoulders, and the king's body rose and convulsed upon the stone with a raw, colliding power of a speared eel. The two giants holding him grunted with strain, and the queen's head rode with the youth's surging body as if it were a part of it. He hammered the rock like a beach dolphin, pounds the wet sand. 
slowing with suffocation, and as he stilled, the queen clutched and nuzzled with a weasel's self-forgetting lust. Her shoulders worked like pumps as she sucked, and her hands kneaded his torso as if it were a great udder of blood. Yeah, like squeezing out toothpaste or yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I, and we find out from that that she has to, and then she ends up going to different spots on his body and sucks more of the blood. She has to get every drop of his blood. Or she doesn't, uh, she, 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 she like, every time she drinks the blood of the year king, she stops the aging. She, what, she, she is about to start About aging. to start aging again. And, yeah. and, uh, if she, uh, go every, if there's, if there's even a cup missing. Yep. Even a half cup. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She she ages. She ages and she ages rapidly. Yeah. It's uh like a year for every day. Yeah. And or every hour or something like that. And uh and so she drinks the blood and uh retreats into her chambers, and Nif decides that's the time to get out to the outside of the city. He and Barnard go out, and then um they trade the half a cup of blood. Oh, he he sends a messenger back into the city to tell them. Yeah, hey, we've got. We've like, got you want it. you want to you want your all your yeah. blood. We've got we've got some out here. Got it. Yeah. And I love how he, uh, when they come to get it, he holds it over the swamp uh-huh. and it's dried. He describes how it's all dried. It looks like a cake, like a puck. Yeah, yeah. and. He you know, he says if if I drop it in here, she's gonna have to drink the whole swamp, the whole swamp, swamp water. water. <laughs> and, and 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 like the exchange is really cool. And he he has gotten uh, uh, he's found out from a sorceress what the fastest demon is uh, and has hired it. And uh, that's a whole other like little side thing that he describes in a paragraph and. Um, they grab two thousand um the pearls through two thousand pearls, which is their uh the ransom for the blood uh and make and off a, on this a horse a couple horses is this the one where they get no this is the that uh, like weird uh salamander creature that's right that's that, right that, yeah. that they're flying that like they're... takes these like giant leaps yeah kind and, of, yeah bounding uh, leaps it, yeah yeah and uh and uh and it has like a uh, scales, so they have to fit their hands and feet under the scales because because it's too slick on the right, scales right. to hold on. And it's traveling so fast that it's really hard to hang on. And but then a guard is chasing them on some like grass, like super fast grasshopper. Basically, yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh man, there's a lot of weird sorceress. insectoid things. Yeah, yeah that for sorceress sure. didn't know that uh, uh, there is something faster because it's gaining on them. And Nif decides to throw a thousand of the pearls behind him to make the guard go after that. And he and he describes the like throwing them all into the air so that they glitter and shine and catch the guy. Like the guy probably, if he had gotten the sacks, he would have been diligent and returned to the queen. But here he's like, I, I want for myself. I these things are beautiful. These. Yeah, I mean, once again, you know the the, the sword and sorcery hero, uh, easy come, easy go. Yeah, with the with the yeah. with the treasure. Yeah, you know, they always they start poor and end poor. Yeah, but and... but they still have a thousand. <laughs> they have a thousand. They I wonder what a... they did with that. Well, he says <laughs> that he's able to survive for two years. Two on years, it, which yeah. is like per. He's like, and I worked my ass off to spend it. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, that story. That story is just so great. I love the, I love how the plot is just kind of, um, it's organic. Mm-hmm. Like, like mm-hmm. there's this just this flow to the plot in that story. Yeah, and they just kind of, they they stumble upon things to do. Yeah, while they're doing something else. I always like plots like that. Yeah, and and the reader has to pay attention to everything because they're not given. Um, more information than they need. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a great story. And mm-hmm. I think that the next story is uh, The Fishing of the Demon Sea. Uh, this is by far the longest. This is about probably a novel length um, yeah, story. Novel it's about 100, 140, 140 yeah. pages. So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's very long. But it's it's not a lot. A lot happens, but it's a lot of just description, of, of description of 
stuff that's going yeah. on. The plot itself is pretty simple, but uh, the intro we actually get a from Shag. We actually get a detailed history of the, kind of like the area in which the story takes place of kind of like the uh, the 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 governments and the kingdoms. And we also learned that this story was actually written by Nift. And it was written as an homage to one of the characters in the story as, as a tribute to uh, to Gildemurth, the privateer. And Gildemurth is this kind of great legendary hero. Um, but I love that. So so this story is all about Nift and 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 Baldar. Baldar? I always forget his name. Baldar. Uh, Barnar. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Baldur Gate. Yeah, Baldur Gate. Yeah, Baldur's Gate. Uh, <laughs> Nift and, and Barnar, uh, the beginning of the story, they are captured. And they are about ready to be tortured to death. And the, uh, the, the leader of the people who captured them says, okay, well, I will let you go if you, again, descend into hell. And instead of deliver somebody to hell, rescue my dumb son. <laughs> has gotten himself into trouble and bring him back to me and we will forgive your transgressions. And uh, so they, they agree. And what I love about this, is the catalyst of this story is actually a typo mm. that was found in a manuscript. So the king's son, what was his name? Uh, uh, Wil Wilfert, uh, Wimfert. Wimfert. So Wimfert, <laughs> this dude is a dumbass, man. I hate this character. I, I wanted him to die. Oh. I just wanted Nif to like push him off yeah. a cliff. Yeah, he's so, so annoying. many times. He's so, so annoying. annoying. But Wimford is like the, right out right out of an 80s movie. Oh yeah. Just yeah. like, ugh, just can't stand this little twerp. Yeah. So we and uh Wimford gets this book that's basically kind of like a, a fantasy version of the anarchist cookbook. Mm. And in this uh book are these uh concoctions, these these uh in ingredients, uh, recipes for a concoction. However, the book that he happens to get is famously known to have a typo because the guy who was transcribing it was lazy and said, oh, this won't matter. And so all kinds of people who use this book to make this concoction actually end up summoning a demon called a, bo a Bonchard. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's a Bonchard. Mm -hmm. And they... Yeah, bon he, Bonchad. He, Bonchad, yeah. yeah. And he summons a demon and the demon takes him to hell. And so there's all these people who have been kidnapped by by his demon while trying to make this uh this concoction from this uh from this typoed recipe and just due to lazy transcribing and i think that is i think that is awesome that such, is a good such, touch. such a just a neat little detail mm -hmm. of of you know, they didn't have to do that he could have just summoned a demon yeah but no it's because of lazy transcribing uh -huh. and that is so great so uh nift and barnard they agree to go into this uh hellish undermine or underworld and this story has it all. If you are a fan of any kind of like gaming, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, or any kind of like dungeon crawling gaming, uh, this is like a story for you. It's got minecart chases, mm -hmm. uh, dungeons, traps, demons, undergrounds, uh, lakes filled with dead, rotting bodies, uh, all these weird, gross, dem uh, demonic entities. And uh, Nift and Barnar, they're, they're, they're navigating it all. And then they meet this guy named Gildemurth the Privateer. And um, Gildemurth, I, I, I believe if I'm remembering correctly, he was kind of self-exiled into yeah, this land of deep. Like, like he went down there to live? What I, I felt like he is almost a more capable and more interesting uh, version of Wimfert. Where he's very curious mm -hmm. yeah. and 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 a magician and a sorcerer, yeah. And so he 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 like moved to hell. He moved to, to hell. Experience to, to, it. Yeah, he has a shack by, yeah. by this demonic lake. Yeah, he's got his fishing poles. I mean, yeah. He's got this whole life down this, there. Yeah, this whole life and In boats and and you come to realize that he doesn't love being there. But, but he, he can't go. He back. can't go back. He's now. he's been there. He's been in hell for so long yeah. that he's starting to. To uh, be corrupted right. by demonic entities, yeah. and he is slowly kind of turning into, turning into a yeah. demon that he's able to 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 Trans maintain his yeah. his human form. Yeah, but at the end of the story, he like 
it almost like he like lets go like uh yeah, yeah. like tetsuo and akira yeah, almost. right right right, right. <laughs> like he can't he can't contain it yeah. any, any longer but yeah. uh gildamirth is a great character mm -hmm. and he ends up kind of being uh, uh nif's and barnard's guide mm -hmm. to help him to help them find wimfort to, to get wimfort and then to get him back out and yeah. The whole time that you're going down, I mean, Nift and, and Barn are just, they're going down and down. And they're constantly talking about how deep they're going. Yeah. And they're always looking back like, oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. We have to get, we have to get back. Yeah. We have gone so far down. Uh-huh. And they're finally down, down, down. They reach that lake. And then Gildemirth helps them. And then they're like, okay, now. Gotta I guess get we back. Got, I guess we got to get back. Yeah. And Wimford is having none of it. Yeah. He is like. What are you guys doing? Like, what are, he doesn't like his dad. Yeah. He doesn't like Nip. Yeah, he doesn't like rules. He doesn't like rules. Obviously. He's like, yeah, I'm going to go yeah. over here. Like, you can't, yeah. you can't and, tell me what to do. Yeah. <laughs> and everything that Nif tells, like, we have to go here. He, I don't want to go there. Yeah. I mean, it really feels uh, like uh, Captain's Courageous, the yeah. old Rudyard yeah. Kipling's novel. Like, this whiny little kid who doesn't want to do any work and listen to anybody. Yeah. Yeah. He's spoiled. Yeah. And he's not good at anything. Yeah. He's he's he, he's, he's not yeah. good. He's he, yeah. he's a spoiled brat yeah. who has no skills. He has delusions, no life skills. Delusions of grandeur. He thinks yeah. he's great. Yeah, he's born what, yeah. born on third, think he hit a yeah. triple or yeah. whatever. Yeah. 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 And yeah. it's just uh, you can just tell Nif's it's it just overcome with anger. Yeah. About yeah. this kid. Like, we got to get this kid back, mm -hmm. back to his dad. Mm -hmm. But there are, uh, I've read some of uh, the passages in my review. Yeah. This is Michael Shea flexing his writing muscles yeah. in this story. Because uh -huh. there are just so many descriptive mm -hmm. moments where they are just kind of drifting on water mm -hmm. and looking at things. And, yeah. And, and, and Shea just spends paragraphs yeah describing hell and yeah. uh some of the most incredibly detailed language yeah. that i've, I've read yeah. and it's like a, a people more people than me have have made this comparison but it's it's a hieronymus bosch's yes the, the garden of unearth earthly, earthly delights. delights yeah i mean yeah that is like he yeah. he puts that painting into words into words yeah in this thing and it, yeah. it's it's yeah i was while reading this, I I was enraptured yeah. by the story. And yeah. the, the plot itself is pretty simple and there's not yes. there's not a ton going on, mm -hmm. I don't think. Mm -hmm. But just the, the the description and the I, texture. The oh, texture in yeah. this one is is everything. And there's just this weird so so when they first meet Gildemirth, uh, they are kind of attacked by this musical demon or this musical uh -huh. there, there, there's there's music and um yeah, he says by now i heard the music much less brokenly finding its melodic line engraved more sharply now in the in the uh shameless ocean echoes lute music no shandaka on each plangent string of it I could now discriminate individually the clustered notes sweetly ripening under the musician's provocative dexterity. Wanderingly, it wove nearer, me uh, meandering through lush elaborations, while yet never lacking elan, a backbone of stark and resonant melancholy. Such music. With this shock, you might feel to discover that one of your limbs, long unnoticed by yourself in any context, Super, superates, transfixed by a dirk already rusting in its lodgment. I realized that music's utter absence up till now had been a sharp and crippling part of the subworld's tormenting ugliness, a wound I lacked the mental leisure to note that I had and bled from. I mean, Shea uses a lot of $10 words there. Yeah, but I was yeah, okay, yeah. what are these words mean? There, uh, there was a lot of times where I was reading this like, Coming across a lot of new words yeah. for me that I don't typically see in in even in verbose uh, right. weird fiction. Yeah, like he was yeah, really yeah. he was really uh, chewing the scenery. I he think, was absolutely in this absolutely, and, and it's interesting that he uh, he kind of focuses all of that into this one story. 
Yeah, because he does have ornate description of of location in each of the other stories, but he really like front loads it. In yeah, this one. yeah. Uh, and it's almost as though he chose this one to be that story. And, you know, the other one is a high story. So it's more of a, you know, I'm focusing on a, on like the components of a heist. And uh, I. Uh, I found it interesting that he just went bonkers on that with this one. Yeah, it's a road. This is kind of a road trip story. Yeah, it's a road trip yeah. to the depths of this. Yeah, crazy hell that yeah. that anybody can get to. I mean, there was just it was, it was it, in a fissure. It was in yeah. a. It was, there was yeah. just like a, a, hole, a hole in the ground. In the ground. And, All right, go to start hell. heading down. Yeah, because hell's right down yeah. there. Yeah, and it just happens to exist right outside this kingdom. This kingdom. Yeah, <laughs> right and outside their walls. Knows it. Everybody knows it. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. the two like don't seem to, to there's not a, they don't they never have to worry about demons escaping for some reason. Yeah, I mean you would think maybe they'd want to come out and get some humans. No, to, no, I guess not. I guess enough of them make stupid decisions. Yeah, enough <laughs> of them have this book. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah this exactly. typos. But uh, or I mean it, also the the trek is just so crazy. Maybe a lot of demons don't want to like trek to get up. Yeah, yeah, uh, up into it. Uh, I did love again just the giving the reader the ability to uh not not be bothered by things uh having them get the uh the sorcerer to bless them with the ability oh, not they no get, hunger that's right they got those spells they, yeah, they, yeah they don't yeah. they don't experience any hunger, hunger or, or thirst or, thirst. or and they they uh like don't get fatigued uh, and and their muscles are just like a little more acute yeah, than yeah. than uh than regular yeah that was a really cool touch so we didn't have to worry about any kind of survival yep. mechanisms yep. that they would have to deal with uh while they were on this journey because yep. who knows how long i mean well, uh the kid was gone for months well, well th there there's that scene when they get down to the lake where there's a time jump Yes. They have been like six months at that point, and their clothes are tattered, and and yeah, and, yeah. and and they're kind of in ribbons and stuff. And I love that he just jumped that that time. It's still a long a long story, yeah, but almost a novel. But uh, but he jumps that, so you know, like you've already kind of you're already kind of fatigued with like how grandiose this place is and crazy and there's always something happening and um and so they've been doing that for six months <laughs> yeah just like yeah. trekking through and killing things oh and like i think at that point they only have like one um like one or two weapons left everything's broken like one of the swords is like broken in half yeah they toss something. it they toss a broken yeah. hilt or something yeah well, that one's done yeah. yeah 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 and then they're super stoked to get some spears again yeah exactly <laughs> like they get some spears from gilded earth and they're yeah. like yes, yes spears. spears cool <laughs> i was like oh yeah these guys really these guys really like their spears yeah but yeah, no, it's a that's a fantastic story i think it could be published as as a as a standalone novel and uh and people would, would really like like to read that. Yeah. But all right, well, let's go on to this last one here. All right. <laughs> the Goddess in Glass. This yeah. wow, this thing is. I, this is I, yeah, this is my, maybe my only real criticism of the yeah. book is is ending it on this story. I would have yeah. swapped places with this yeah. and and the third story. Yeah. Yep. This is kind of a weird kind of cerebral, mm -hmm. just a very different story, mm -hmm. a break. And I think the third story leaves the reader on a much higher note. Yeah, absolutely. this one is very subdued. It's mm -hmm. it's I'll be, a lot happens, but it's not exciting. At no, all, no, no, really, no, no. It's very cerebral. Yeah, um, cosmic. I mean, this is it, this cosmic. is this puts yeah. Nift in science fiction yeah. territory, right? Basically, right, right, right. spaceships, maybe. Yeah, aliens, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, so. The Shag Margold introduction uh, kind of talks about the like state of warfare in the Nift world and kind of around the kingdom that we're going to be traveling to. Um, and uh, that's really, 
most of most yeah, of what that yeah. that introduction is about. He does uh, make reference to the Pearl of the Vampire Queen. Yes, which I thought he was does. interesting. Yeah, he that was does. that was cool. Yeah, I, I love like, oh, that. Wow, I felt like he's like referencing other things in the book. Yeah, and I think that I think one of the reasons why I, I get the connection now between uh, Shag Margold, the the narrate or the uh, the framing devices, and Shay also coming from a post Lovecraftian mythos school where they also make reference to other volumes of right. work. And so right. I, I, yes. I, I get that tradition. Yep. I think he was definitely working with that. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Um, so Nift in the story, I, I, I find it really interesting that even though Barnar is not really a character in two of the stories, mm-hmm. in, the, in the main part of the story, he is uh, at least referenced in each story. So in the in that in that first, first story, phase, and he's in the first couple pages. Yeah, and and Nift and him are Nift up, is up telling him, or yeah, something. yeah, yeah. Nift they're, is they're telling, out in a yeah, tree. yeah, yeah. He, Nift is entertaining him yes. with a story yeah. of his previous adventures with another friend, yeah, uh, companion. And then this one, it begins with Nift and Barnar on some adventure, and they receive a message uh, from Shag asking if Nift could investigate a place called Anvil Pastures. Um, and report back as to why they have enjoyed a prosperous year. Um, and did you I, that that was weird too? Like like Shag kind of giving yeah. Nift a, a quest or or well, and, uh, and and to, it's not even an adventure quest. It's just no. Be my errand boy. But he, or, <laughs> well, yeah, but he, but he also has to be an observer, almost a journalist yeah, for him. Yeah, a research assistant. In a, in, a, in a sense. Yeah. Uh, uh, which is another skill that I guess Shag sees in Nift and knows that Nift would be would be able to do this. Yeah. And then did Barnard go back home to Chillite or whatever? They, they don't even, I don't even think it says. Does it say? I think okay. it's just because okay. Shag just asked Nift to go and it's not something that needs help. So he just goes off on his own. And Bar- Barnard is called Barnard the Chillite. The Chillite. The Chillite. Yeah. I, I guess I, in my mind, that was where he was from. Yeah. I, I don't know if that's true or not. Yeah. But that, that, that's, that's what, what I, that's what I assume yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Conan I mean, the Sumerian. It, it, yeah. it could yeah. be that he has a uh, a like vestigial tail, and that's what they call yeah. people <laughs> yeah. with vestigial he's, tails. He's in a this. Chillite. He's a Chillite. <laughs> but uh, you know, that's just my assumption. Um, uh, so Shag has heard that the uh this there is a um an oracle that communicates with a goddess the goddess yeah and this goddess has provided them with information that is allowed them to acquire great wealth um and on the way there nif meets a contingent of mercenaries and engineers led by candros it's so interesting uh, I really wonder what maybe on the next reread I'll get more what Shay is saying about companionship and maybe male companionship because mm-hmm. there are three different companions that you see in these stories uh, and 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 I, I in a in a sense so is um, Gilmar uh, Guildmurth Guildmurth Guildmurth, Guildmurth yeah in the, yeah in the in the third story. Um, uh, like he he's a good hang. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they have a beer together. They have a, they, yeah, they yeah. Out, and, and he's they, just they chill. Drink. He's chill. Yeah. And and so Kandros is kind of the same way. Yeah. Like he like he and Shag just like get on and they just like share some drink. There's like uh, a, a great sequence where like like he inspected the uh, the tankard and then passed it to Nift and Nift inspected the tankard and and you know like. Like them just being buddies, yeah, is yeah. like very important to to Shay. Uh, anyway, they uh, they these mercenaries and engineers have been hired by Anvil Pastures. Uh, they are told that Anvil Pastures sold um, weapons to two different armies to belligerents, and Anvil Pastures talked them into going to war together. <laughs> Yeah. And then the, the armies figured it out after they had already like decimated the, each other and are now forcing um, Anvil Pastures to create, continue creating the weapons for them. 
Um, but then that's just kind of dropped. That's not really brought up much through the rest of the story. It's no, really yeah, th I thought the story was going to go in that direction. Yeah. where Nick was going to be involved in in de escalate de escalating right, right, this right, conflict, right. Or, something. or maybe a Yojimbo yeah. kind exactly of thing. playing both sides yeah. to to come yeah. out on top or right. something. Right, yeah. right, yeah. Um, uh, as they uh, arrive, because they're arriving by boat, as they're coming into the bay of Anvil Pastures, there's this giant staff. Uh, looks like stone coming out of the water. Um, uh, they find out that the goddess of the city, also called a flock warden, was of an alien race, and it's only her dead body, uh, and only her dead body of that alien race that that lived on this uh, on the planet, only hers has remained intact. Um, after the rest of the race has been exterminated. Mm -hmm. And the Oracle can communicate with the connection that body has with the ground. Um, right. Uh, then Shag and uh, Kandros... Uh, Nift. Nift and, oh, Nift and Yeah, yep. Nift and Kandros. They observe um, this giant post in the city wall that is... Um, Looks like a, a gigantic hammer. A gigantic hammer. Um, yeah. And and people throughout the story yeah, keep saying so, hammer and staff. Yeah, uh, no, it's but, hammer. It's so yeah. What's the play on words there? Oh, pastor. It's the the play on words. So you end up at the end. They they reconstitute this skeleton that's named Pastu, Pastur. Yeah. P a s t u r. And so it's called Anvil's it's pasture, pasture, but it's and it's not yeah. the 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 anvil of pasture. Of pasture, yeah, 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 and yeah, and they they make it's a pretty big kind of not a reveal, but yeah. Nift asks the question like, "Well, what is this again?" Like, yeah. well, no, you're you're hearing it wrong. Yeah, you, you you've yeah. been hearing it wrong this whole time. It's, right, it's this. Right, yeah, yeah. right. Uh, they uh, they uh, assume. The, I think as somebody talks about how the uh, flock wardens worked with humans millennia ago and aided humans in constructing spaceships to travel to other planets. And then something happened and the humans turned on the flock wardens and exterminated them. So yeah, they're like in insectoids, insectoids. Yeah. and they, they go through larval. They're, they're, they're well, larva. Yeah. We find they, that yeah. out in, yeah. in, in, later on. And, and, um, so right after finding this out, Nift sees the goddess's corpse. It, it kind of sounds like it's it, uh, almost like a sculpture almost. Yes. Is, is, is kind of how it's described, uh, like a crystal sculpture yeah, or something. Yeah. But it uh, basically looks like a giant dragonfly. Yeah, exactly. Is, is, yeah. is what he, how he describes it. Um, and the oracle's name is Libus. She channels the goddess and says that they need to sail to this place with multiple ships to pick up these elephantine cattle <laughs> that the flock wardens used to um, uh, used to shepherd on the planet, and they've been living underground for millennia, and now they are out of the... Uh, um, uh, out from below the ground oh, right and they bring them back to anvil pastures where they then ingest rock and defecate pure metal components of the rock and some kind of a, a fuel fuel source right efficient yeah. fuel source yeah and um the goddesses the goddess communicates with the oracle uh says that her giant body needs to be uh, carried down, transported down um, towards the harbor, and they have to dismantle a bunch of the the, uh, the city to be able to do that. To get her so through, giant to get her body to get, through, to get her body yeah, through yeah. the streets and stuff. I love <laughs> I love that stuff. Um, and then uh, the oracle smacks the flock warden with a hammer again. Another hammer reference, um, and the coating falls off. The flock warden is alive, starts buzzing her wings, flies around, penetrates with some kind of stinger. Mm -hmm. uh, each of the, or it sounds like it's, it's not described how many, but uh, all of the giant cattle 
and um, they then be begin a little bit later um, laying eggs. Um, and then the flock warden dies and the town, and she's the only one who's been controlling all of these giant cattle. Right, she's uh, keeping them in keeping them, of, keeping them in check a little yep. bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and she really is the warden of a flock, and uh, the town fears that they'll go rampaging through the um, through the town. And the oracle tells them they need to coat the walls with solid gold, and they freak out. All the rich people freak out, uh, and they but they do it. And it looks like the cattle aren't able to chew through gold. Right. And um, so they just start budding the walls. They're not, it takes, you know, it's taking a while. Um, they think there's only a couple days until they'll get through. Um, and then the eggs start to hatch. Some of them, most of them just look like the regular small versions of the cattle. Then the others are, again, like insectoid, yeah, weird, I, like weird things that start eating. They start eating the, the, the mountains the, and No, no, and they start, right? they, no, they just start eating the young, uh, regular cattle. Oh, okay. They, okay. they just start devouring them. And there's uh, that great description of, like, the young cattle will be in the middle of eating like they're still eating and they're being devoured by the other one and they're still like eating the, yeah. the ground the, the uh, rocks and stuff like i just kept picturing you know uh, uh, wood destroying organisms like, yeah like yeah yeah, like, yeah you know just, yeah. Th these things are they're, yeah. they're pests. this this, they're this pests one the, to this world absolutely this one felt a lot like a uh, uh like a, a wood ant or something yeah um uh, a carpenter, a carpenter, yeah, yeah or exactly. termite or something, or termite, and, yeah. and they eat stone and metal, yeah. and their fracas is yeah, yeah. other kinds of weird metal or something, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, and then, uh, then the oracle tells them to stop the cattle from getting in. That they need to find the bones of pasture, pasteur, who is in the. Um, uh, in the mountain and the, so they find his bones and he's giant he's a giant yep and they're putting the bones together and they realize they don't have the right hand and they it's, have everything else and yeah. then and then the oracle gets another communication that it's what's holding it's the spear the spear that's in yeah. the harbor so they go and grab that and there's a great description of the the hand locking into place and it's or the final finger of the hand and it's like a wet smacking sound yeah, yeah. and then the uh skeleton comes to life and the um and grabs the hammer out of the wall and tears it out of the that wall giant the, the giant, giant hammer, hammer that was that kind of like part, a, it was part, part of, of the, the wall the wall yeah, it was like, like the main structure thing yeah. that the wall was probably built out from yeah the main support of the of the wall and then the, the oracle's like all right townspeople you yep. have to help pastor work his um uh, uh work his ironworks and he's gonna build ships so he can go back home <laughs> and uh tough shit you gotta you're gonna that, have to work for him that oracle is i don't know she's such an interesting character yeah and yeah she's always kind of she doesn't know exactly what's going on either i don't I, I I didn't think so, but then her the way she delivered that speech at the end when yeah. she leaves them, it's it, it she doesn't sound surprised at all. She's like, "Yeah, hey, this is what you got to do." Like, I kept thinking of her as I don't know. I kept getting like uh, almost like an anime style character of uh, this kind of like really. Uh, Almost like Project Aiko style, mm. kind of verbose female oh, yeah. anime character, yeah. where she's yeah, always yeah. like arms akimbo, uh -huh. like and, and like, talks really haughty. Uh -huh, like, yeah, oh, how dare you? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, she also becomes very drawn to Nift and uh, Kandros. And why do you think? Why did the people of 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 Anvil's pasture? Yeah. Uh, Look to her as le in leadership. 
Was it just the cult? Was it the was uh, it the, the power? Money. I think it, it was the money. The money from from supplying yeah. the arms to the to the warring factions. Yeah, and I think it was her guidance that uh, uh, gave them great wealth. But oh, we're wow. we aren't even like told exactly no. where they got their wealth. We just know they're all super wealthy, and it's because of her. <laughs> they're <laughs> super wealthy, but they they also are. I think they're they're living in. In a pretty ugly area, aren't they? I mean, it's like it's all gray and stone, right? Yeah. From what you can't, from what I imagine. Yeah. Well, it sounds like it's all built from stone. Yeah, and it's like so, it's carved out and, and right, and, and right, there, right. There's there's not a lot going on. Right. But there is. I mean, there's enough gold to cover city walls. Yeah. So they have a lot of money, and she's constantly. The oracle is constantly fighting. With the the wealthy in the town who are constantly coming and fighting her on some yeah, of these things yeah. that that she's asking them to do, um, and that's I mean that's really the only um, opposition, the only antagonist in this story. Yeah, is that are, conflict are the, there? Are the wealthy just fighting her? But then they always do what she tells. Yeah, them, I know. Yeah, she has like yeah, them. she's just do yeah. this. Like okay, we'll yeah. do this. We don't yeah. want to. Yeah. You better. Yeah. All okay. right, we will. Yeah. And I, I, I'm, I'm my. The only thing I can guess is that she has said crazy things before, before. and it always works out. That's my guess. Like the, she has a, a track record, and maybe the the flock warden has. Or seen that she needs to do that to be able to get them to do what right. what, what they need to do because they they need the city's manpower and wealth to be able to hire the ships to go get the cattle that they that they then pick up and bring back and, and um, so it was like this whole thing this whole thing was just was was this just the long gestation period this whole what, what, what was the city in its entire history made only for this gestation period of the flock wardens larva yeah well so they could gestate long enough on this planet yeah and then they could build a spaceship uh, and they I, could leave i mean my guess is that is that is, that, is, is it a yeah an aeons long plan I, that, that's been in, in in the works the only thing i can think is that uh, I would have to go back and reread exactly that description of how the cattle come back from underground. Yeah, right. Because it sounds like, you know, they are the necessary component. Yes. Without them, nothing else can happen. And so it may have been just jumping at the time when they finally come out from uh, from their slumber. Or, yeah. Or, or whatever. But they're like... um. What are the the insects that sleep for twenty three years? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah c- cicadas, the right? Cicadas, yeah. So every yeah. you know every what seventeen, like right. seventeen or twenty three years or something. Right. And right. Is this it's, like it's, every? Yeah, it's, I think it's seven years. It seven years. Yeah. yeah, and then some place like Japan, I I don't know if it's a different um, species of them, uh, but uh, or variant of them, but there's there they come out every. But I don't know if each one is on still on a seven year cycle. Yeah, yeah, and the, and it's just been staggered. There's a group that comes. Oh, up, I, you know? well, yeah, yeah. So every year you hear, it, but like in the Northeast, uh, in the U.S., uh, all of those states, it is every seven. Years. Yeah, yeah. So I get the sense that maybe these things were gestating in in, in, right. in the Earth for maybe their 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 life cycle is three hundred years yeah. or however long this yeah. city has been around. And right now it's time. And yeah, and. The, the, this flock warden has kind of used the earth or whatever planet yeah. they're, they're on in this, in these stories yeah. as it's, as it's uh incubator. Yeah. Now it's time to head off to some other planet. Yeah. Uh, maybe yeah. the whole planet's going to collapse now because <laughs> maybe they've done <laughs> right. all this mining underneath. I yeah. don't know. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. I don't know the ramifications of, right. Of what right. this, and how big does the ship need to be? Yeah. And yeah. Right. Right, right. But yeah, that's just that's a that's a weird story. So it's weird. It's a really weird story. It's, it, it, in in every way. Not not only is it just like weird stuff happens, but the structure is weird. Uh-huh. The fact that there is no real action. It um It's the only story written from the third person. Yeah, and it's the only story written. So it has a more stilted 
um, flow mm -hmm. than the other ones do. Like why? Like why yeah. was this third person? Yeah. Why couldn't this have been Nift telling? I right. mean, I guess, I guess we know you couldn't have Nift because uh, Nift would not be privy to the inner workings of of, of, of the cult of yeah. Flock Warden. Yeah, we, but we, most we of it, it you know? most of it, he's somebody is talking to Nift about it. Most of yeah. what you most of what you learn is ni like Nift hanging out with someone, and they're like, "I kind of wonder if blah 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 blah," and then they say something, or this is the way it happened back in the day, and because uh, uh, there is no narrator that Info does, it's no, just it's, character. It's, not, it's yeah, other characters right. that are talking to Nift. Um, so I, yeah, I, who who the hell knows? I got way more out of this the second read. It was far more interesting uh the first time i was just like why why yeah, I know. there was a why, lot of, why why there's a lot of times i was reading why? this last story just yeah. going like okay this is yeah. it's interesting yeah it's unique yeah. and it's uh there's definitely something going on but man yeah. i lost the plot on this one a yeah. lot well there is no plot yeah. <laughs> and there's no you don't get any of that really grotesque no. descriptions of things just the really, eating the like eating, the eating yeah. of the, the 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 young insectoids uh carnivorous insectoids hatching and eating yeah. the other young ones there's like, no spears no spears <laughs> not i don't think there's one spear uh oh there's the staff <laughs> yeah the big staff, the the big giant staff. staff yeah um yeah no it is it is very weird did you ever read uh grass by sherry s tepper I never read Grass. Yeah. No, but I know of it. It yeah. has a, there's yeah. a certain similarity in there where there's this mystery that gets revealed at the end and like a lot hinges on it and it's a little weird. Yeah. But uh, uh yeah, my my wife, Jessica, likes Tepper uh, a lot. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, she's read a lot yeah. of uh, her stuff this yeah. past year. Oh, interesting. Post apocalyptic. Yeah, this stuff, is a feminism. This, yeah, and, yeah, like very feminist. Yeah. Um, and that part of the story was like very well done. Yeah, I think it Jessica was, really likes Grass yeah, a lot now yeah, that yeah, I, I, I think of it. Yeah, Grass is a little more fantasy. Okay, maybe she hasn't read that one, but yeah. she likes Tepper. I think yeah. Tepper won a Philip K. Dick Award back in the day. I think, yes, yeah. I think. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. But all right, well, hey, everybody, I hope you guys enjoyed this very long and uh, de detailed discussion on Nithaline. Hopefully yeah. we can do this you again. You better have enjoyed it. Yeah, so maybe we'll do this on Bard. I don't know. Well, I, wonder yeah. if, I wonder if we could have you, me, and Dan record something on Bard. I wonder if we could stay focused long enough. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have to wait on the whiskey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we'll do some more of these discussions later and hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, thanks for stopping by, Aaron. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yep. Kisses, everyone. Yep. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.